A Georgia State Senate committee is going to be holding a hearing later today with the attorney who exposed the alleged affair set to testify after being subpoenaed. This comes as a new court filing claims one witness lied about when Willis's affair allegedly started, writing, quote, what Mr. Bradley testified to on the witness stand was directly contrary to what Mr. Bradley had told attorney Cindy Lee Yeager in person. Joining me now to react is former federal prosecutor and West Coast trial lawyers president Nima Ramani. Nima, thanks so much for being here. We're talking about a lot of lawyers, and by the day, the number of lawyers we talk about involved in the case seems to grow. So let's break this down. The lawyer that's testifying in front of the Georgia State Senate is Ashley Merchant. She is a lawyer for the defense. How rare is that for a defense attorney to testify in front of a legislative body literally right in the middle of the case that she's working on? Like, that just seems very odd to me. Well, Todd, it is rare, but what we're dealing with is potential misconduct proceedings against Bonnie Willis. And this is something Judge McAfee alluded to. He said, well, even if Willis and Wade started their relationship earlier and they lied about it, is that really grounds for disqualification? Or is it more an ethics issue or a state bar disciplinary proceeding issue? This is somewhat related when you have a Georgia legislative body looking into these allegations. Okay, so to that point, what impact, if any, could this Senate hearing have on the underlying case? I don't think it's going to have any impact because really what we need here for disqualification is a financial conflict of interest, not just lying, not just paying your boyfriend. We need something more. So that's why you see the defense here. They're really trying to connect the dots and argue that this was an unlawful kickback scheme where Willis hired Wade to benefit her personally. I'm just not sure they've connected those dots yet. Okay, so you don't think that the judge in this case has enough evidence to disqualify Fonnie Willis or her office? I think, and if I had to guess, I think McAfee will keep her on the case. Now, Todd, that doesn't mean that I think she shouldn't step down. I mean, I think her conduct is improper, it's unethical, and it's really cast in entire cloud over the proceedings here. This has been an unnecessary distraction and a circus from the merits of the actual case. Okay, now I'm going to cross-examine you. Even if the judge does not disqualify her in the case, what happens if, let's say, the state bar kicks her out? Seems like it would be really tough to be a prosecutor in Georgia if you don't have your bar card. What happens then? Well, what would happen is career prosecutors would step in and they would take over the case. The issue here is not just Fonnie Willis, because I'm not sure that she's going to be personally prosecuting this case. It's should her entire office be disqualified, because if they do, then another district attorney's office would have to step over, step in and take over. And given the proceedings where we are, this was the last case to be filed. There's 15 co-defendants left, it's unlikely we're going to get a trial before the November general election if that happens. Interesting. All right, let's switch gears to a completely different case. Closing arguments set for today as the state rests in the Rust movie trial case. One ammunition supplier testifying on Monday that he provided no live rounds to the Rust set. Listen. Did you provide any live ammunition to the set of Rust? No. Did you ever give any live ammunition to Sarah Zachary? No. Have you seen photos of the live ammunition that was found on the set of rust? I have. Did you possess any ammunition that looked like that? No. Okay, so this is the case of the armorer. Uh, if that individual you saw on the stand did not bring the live ammunition, did the armorer? Well, I think that's what the state is arguing. I think they've been successful so far. So the issue here is there were live rounds on set, and they're clearly in Hannah Gutierrez Reed's possession. Now, she's trying to point the finger at others, saying that the production was sloppy, there were cut in corners, and that maybe the ammunition supplier gave those live rounds. But really, the evidence doesn't support that. You have the testimony that there were no live rounds. And when law enforcement actually conducted a search warrant at the premises of the business of the supplier, they found no ammunition that matched the round that killed Helena Hutchins. What does all of this mean for the case against Alec Baldwin? Well, I think this is all good news for Alec Baldwin, and this is why. One of two things will happen. Hannah Gutierrez-Reed will be convicted, in which case Baldwin will point to the empty chair at trial. He'll say, well, Here's the person who's responsible. But even if it's a hung jury or Gutierrez-Reed is somehow acquitted, what will happen is 
Baldwin and his lawyers have now gotten a free preview of the testimony that's going to come out, the evidence and the exhibits to come out at trial. So they'll be better equipped to set up their defense. There we go. We covered a lot. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.